Hi everyone, welcome back to this video series on how to use Deacon Sync. So once you log in to Deacon Sync, this is the page that you will be greeted with. And this is what Deacon describes as your personal student hub. So first and foremost, you'll see all the units that you're enrolled in for the trimester. You've also got a number of options around these. We will address these a little bit later. For now, I want you to avert your attention to the top of the screen. Now, at the top of the page is where you can access several sites linked to your Deacon account. The most used of these will be your email, which is this one here, as this is the key way in which unit chairs, lecturers and teachers will contact you outside of your course material. So they might update you with room location changes, or they might update you on course material changes. They'll also update this in the unit itself, but more often than not, they will give you, an, they will send you an email and that the way to access your email is by going through Deacon Sync and clicking this tab here. Next to that is the calendar. Um, and so this calendar can be set up to show your timetable. This is a little fun handy fact that I found out later on in my education. So I'll quickly show you how to do that now. Simply go over to settings, click configure Deacon Sync. Go down to calendar settings and then click cloud Deacon calendar and class timetable and select save. Cool. Now going back to what's at the top, you've got people, OneDrive, Skype, portfolio. These four, I'm not going to go into too much detail. I'm actually, if any detail, purely because I haven't used them extensively. Um, portfolio, I only used once for one unit and I haven't used it since. You essentially, whether or not you use these is up to you and or up to the unit in the case of portfolio. So I'll let, I'll let you explore these in your own time. Next to that, however, is a very important link, which takes you to student connect. So student connect is important as this is where you will update any of your personal details as well as anything related to your course. So this is pretty much your connection to you as a person to the university. Um, Next to that, you've also got STAR. Now, STAR is also important because this is where you'll find all the information necessary pertaining to your timetable and room locations. So here is my enrollment, my different units that I'm currently undertaking this trimester. If I click timetable, it'll show me what is currently on for the week. Now, given that it is week 11, there's pretty much nothing on. We're nearing the end of the trimester. Now, as for apps on demand, I haven't had a need to use this because I like to focus more on the software library, but it, depending on your course, you may find useful apps to use within this section. Uh, I won't select it because I haven't had a need for it and I'm not going to show you what I can't explain. Next is your IT help and feel free to use these guys whenever you are having trouble, either printing or with the university Wi-Fi. You've also got information pertaining to software, hardware, so on and so forth. These guys are always available to help out and they're, you know, quite good at what they do. So if, if ever in need, give the IT gurus a call. Um, enable accessibility, that just changes the layout of your Deacon Sync page. I personally don't like this. To go back to the original layout, just simply select Deacon Sync Original. As for the tabs, which are these ones here, we will first focus on favorites. Now favorites is particularly handy because it allows you to keep resources from Deacon Sync that you deem important and readily available. For example, say you want important dates, which I've got here. You find this in enrollment and fees and money. Now, rather than looking for it in enrollment fees and money, what I have done is, is I've selected the little heart icon in the particular box and when this is highlighted, this will then transpose it into the favorites tab. That way it sorts out what I think is important from the rest. 
Next is communities, and communities gives you access to many feeds and discussion areas once it loads. Um, these are made by teachers and students, and the possibilities of what are in these discussion areas are endless. Usually they're um, course specific or unit specific. It may be useful to you, for me personally it hasn't been, but to browse communities, simply go down to browse communities. And then it'll load very slowly. <laughs> and then from here you can see suggested communities as it loads, all communities and my communities. Next and by far the most used resource will be your library tab. From here you'll have access to the search tab, so you can directly search the library. You've also got access to the advanced search option, catalogue. You can even be taken to Google Scholar, your A to Z databases and the A to Z journals and newspapers, which you will use heavily when you are researching papers, assignments, so on and so forth. You've also got access to your loans and anything you've got on hold. Anytime you take out a book on loan, this will be updated. So you've always got, you're always keeping track of what you have got borrowed. You've also got access to a number of resources such as the online tutorials. I highly recommend checking these guys out, especially if you're a new student, which you are. <laughs> so yeah, check these out. That way you get the most out of searching the library for the resources you'll need. You've also got resource guides, so depending on the area or course of interest that you're in. So for me, I'm in humanities and social sciences, but there's also education guides, community communication and creative arts guides. So I'll click on humanities, for example, and it'll come up with all these guides here, but you've also got law, health and medicine, education, so on and so forth. Um, these other tabs all are worth exploring by yourself. Simply go through what you think is interesting and add what even what you think is important to favourite so you can come back to it later. You've also got access to specific information. This might include your week, your the, the date, the even the weather that's at the campus that you are currently studying at. It may also include road closures due to building works or any other significant events that affect the whole university. These will also get emailed to you, so be sure to check your inbox regularly, which is up here, so just remember that. And you've also got the news area here. You've also got ask a question. Now, ask a question is just another way to simply ask university staff what's going on. You, it's to essentially, uh, you have an inquiry, whether about, it's about the site or anything else, totally up to whatever your query is. And that concludes this video.